job that uh, Tim Copra and his uh, crewmates are doing on board the International Space Station is supporting the development of future missions out to deep space. Uh, that's part of what the International Space Station is all about. But this space station is not the only place where that kind of work is going on. Here at the Johnson Space Center, NASA's Human Research Program has begun its third campaign using the Human Exploration Research Analog Habitat. Just last week, four people began a simulated 715-day mission to an asteroid inside this Hera habitat. They're conducting scientific research across multiple disciplines. Last week, my colleague Gary Jordan talked with Lisa Spence, the Flight Analog Project Manager, about this mission, and he asked her to summarize the scientific goals. The mission that we just started is going to be a 30-day simulation of a 715-day mission to an asteroid. So the crew members that we'll have inside the HERA um, are, are really simulating a long-duration space flight mission in which they're doing a transit phase, an at-the-asteroid phase, and a return phase to Earth all in 30 days. So it's really very exciting. They get a lot of scientific research done for us, and they do a lot of tasks that sort of fill out their timeline. Very cool. So it's a good thing. They're not actually going to be there for 715 days. 30 days makes it a little bit easier. But can you tell us um, where they're going to be? Describe this habitat for us. So the HERA is actually a three-story structure that we have in Building 220 here at the Johnson Space Center. Um, the first story is really what uh, I call the, the working structure. It's um, Similar to the ISS lab, if you will, except ours is more vertical than horizontal that you see in Building 9. So, so the lab areas where the crew members are going to spend a lot of their time actually doing the scientific investigations, doing a lot of the tasks uh, that they'll be conducting during the mission. They'll be doing some simulations, some robotic analysis, all, all sorts of different tasks that they do on the working level. Uh, the second level is what I call the habitation level. So that's they have the galley. Uh, they have uh, some exercise equipment on the second level. They do get to perform some work tasks on the second level. Our ECLIS system uh, is on the second level, and they'll be doing some support work with the ECLIS system. And then the third level is their sleeping quarters. So you can think of it as the crew quarters on the ISS. So each crew member has his or her own uh, sleep station, their own private space that they can spend time in uh, only eight hours a day. So plenty of space in the HERA for them to actually do their work and live because they do have to be there in this particular simulation for 30 days. So tell us a little bit more about the mission, the research that they're going to be doing. So the, the primary purpose of the HERA is to do human research. So we're part of the human research program. And during this particular series of missions, the crew members involved in the HERA are going to be conducting scientific investigations for over 20 different principal investigators. It covers a very broad range of scientific investigations. So um, the majority are looking at behavioral health and performance, but even within behavioral health, health and performance, it's split between things like mood states and anxiety, reactions to different kinds of stressors, uh, how well people are sleeping, how well they get along with each other. Uh, we look at team dynamics and individual dynamics. We're also doing some investigations using some um, wearable sensors, so some physiological and some um, future medical, potential medical experiments on, on the crew members. And we're even doing a study on a potential future food system for long-duration space missions. So we really have a very broad spectrum of research that's being conducted during the 30-day mission. So a lot of research being done in this 30 days. Do you do 30 days all the time, or is this the first time that this is happening? This is the first time that the HERA is involved in a 30-day mission. Uh, the HERA has been around only for a couple of years. The first year, they did uh, seven-day missions, and we did four of those. The second year, we did 14-day missions. We did four of those. And so uh, the mission that's just now starting will be the first 30-day mission, and we will do four identical 30-day missions during this calendar year. Excellent. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit what's different about doing 30 days versus the seven that you were talking about. 
There's a there's a significant difference. Um, most people can probably uh, get through a situation um, in seven days without too much uh, too much anxiety. As we go longer and longer, our crew members are isolated. We call our, our environment isolated, confined, and controlled. So our crew members do not have access to the internet. Uh, they do not have their cell phones. They will not have radio or television. Their their primary interaction over the next 30 days is going to be with the, uh, the HERA Mission Control Center. So they will be interacting with the HERA MCC. Uh, once a week, they will be allowed to have a private conversation with their family. And just like on the space station, should they have a need or desire to have a conversation with a medical doctor, we always have one on call. But their, their primary interface is going to be with each other, just the four of them, and mission control. No Wi-Fi for 30 days, that's going to be tough, but tell us about the, the four of them. Who are they? We have really four excellent and highly motivated crew members for this particular mission. Um, we have one crew member who is actually from JSC, a flight controller at JSC. We have a scientist from Kennedy Space Center. We have a medical doctor and we have an aerospace engineer who works for Virgin Galactic. So our, uh, we're, we're pretty excited and so are our crew members. Our, our crew members are uh, Leah Honey, uh, Michelle Courtney, Lachelle Spencer, and Julie Lynn Wong, and they come from, as I said, all over the country. They're not just from the local area here in Houston. Now, is there a way that people at home can follow along for the mission, or at least afterwards uh, get a glimpse of what happened during the 30 days? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a couple things that we're going to be doing for this mission that we have not done in the past. Uh, the, the crew members really aren't going to be able to uh, engage in social media or to send blogs out or anything like that. But we at Mission Control will be working with the crew members and we'll be working with uh, the folks in public affairs here at JSC to, uh, to to do a little bit more media outreach. So we'll, we'll have some features coming out uh, prior to the mission, about what the mission is all about. You'll get to meet our crew members a little bit more uh, in some of those features. And we will be doing weekly updates that we'll share with our social media friends here at JSC. So we'll be doing some, some weekly updates. We'll blast out some photographs. We'll give you a little bit more information about what's going on with the mission. And then we're, uh, we're hopefully also going to be able to get some insights and some inputs from the crew members on a at least a weekly basis so that we can hear it in their own words how things are going for the mission. Well, we look forward to hearing about their mission and seeing some of the results that come from a human research perspective. Uh, Lisa Spence, the uh, Flight Analog Project Manager for the HERA. Thanks for being with us today. My pleasure. Thank you.